Hi folks, today is World Albatross Day and I will be doing a demonstration on sort of loose watercolour with albatross. I've painted many of them before as I work on an expedition ship mainly down in the southern ocean and up in the north and I'll be doing a demo on the black browed albatross and this is sort of, this is one I've done in the past and this is the type of demonstration I will be doing. So welcome. Hi folks, so for today, World Albatross Day, I'm going to be doing um, a bit of a sketch or watercolour of albatross flying over the ocean, but I'm going to be trying to use two different mediums at the same time, this golden fluid acrylic, uh, a little bit of the acrylic ink Liquitex, and then of course my, my watercolours. And then I want to try and mix that with, uh, while it's still damp, I'm going to try these different varieties. So a little bit of table salt, then I've got uh, a coarse, coarse sea salt, and I have, whoop, I've got another type of salt in here that's sort of between the two. It's like a Himalayan salt. So I want to try and combine everything and uh, let's see how it goes. So I have already drawn my albatross. This might take a little bit of time and if you don't want to be uh, erasing on your watercolor paper all the time, I suggest you do uh, a bit of a drawing, maybe cut it out and trace it or put tracing paper on top of your other drawing and then uh, transfer it onto the, the watercolor paper. So I've just got to get my water and so the first thing I want to do is mix up a little bit of my my paints just to get them ready and seeing that it's the sea I'm going to be using a lot of this lovely turquoise that I have whoop there really goes something oh and I mustn't forget my paper towel just to whoop just to dab it a bit. I've also got an ultramarine blue. So sometimes I like to moisten my watercolors that have been squeezed in with uh, tubes. I buy the tubes and I squeeze them into my palette. And sometimes I will moist them first but not always, it depends on, it's, it's winter here at the moment and things stay, stay pretty moist. And then I'm going to use quite a nice sort of indigo blue color. So I've got that ready. And then in this palette, I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit of the golden Fluid acrylics. It's uh, the one is high flow. The other one is just the normal fluid acrylic. And we just want to see what happens with those. The white Liquitex is in a little nozzle, so I will can use that as is. And this consistency is a bit like heavy cream I'm just gonna see this gorgeous color this is the um, the turquoise turquoise thalo the other one is teal so just get a bit of water in there and then a little bit in the teal okay always your dirty water for for cleaning your brushes and then your clean water for painting on the page so the first thing we've got to do is to paint with water because wherever you put the water that is where the paint is going to go I do want the watercolor to or the paint should I say because I'm not sure if I'll be using which paint where but I want the whole bird to have color around it. 
So you paint with water first, then the watercolor or the acrylic spreads really nicely. I have taped the edges with some masking tape, just so it doesn't run all over the place. I'm not going to wet the whole surface. I like there to be a sort of uh, abstract shape. A bit like the waves themselves. Now if you if you look at the shine on the paper you will see if it's wet enough or not. So there's some places where it's absorbed the water very quickly. So I'm just adding some more in that area. Okay, that's fairly wet. So I'm just going to drop in some of my colors. Just being a bit careful around the bird itself. Although it shouldn't run in there. We don't want to sort of go and paint right over the top of it. And just use your different colors here and there to get some variety. As you know, the sea is never one flat color. And remembering that watercolor dries lighter. So you can go pretty heavy or pretty, pretty strong with your color. But also the wings are quite dark of this black browed albatross that I'm painting. So I will maybe try not to put too many dark colors in that area. And now I'm just going to put some of, oh, look how nicely that spreads. Wow. Just some of the acrylic. Now remember acrylic is pretty permanent. So whatever you put on, you won't be able to move. Look what's happening there. Awesome. I'll try the, uh, the teal. Mm, not that happy with that one. Drop some of the white around. has formed this is Fabriano paper it has formed a bit of a bubble there so or should I say the paint has run in there this is 250 gram paper so it is pretty pretty good paper Fabriano right so now I'm going to just come in with some table salt try and vary it up It won't react that well if you put it on when it's too wet. So I'm just going to try and have a look. This is the coarse one. And then the in between the... This is the... Himalayan salt. So we don't want to spread it everywhere. That's already dried there, so not much will happen there. And then I feel that I just want to darken some of the colors. I'm not sure what this is going to do with the salt. So it's a bit of experimentation for me as well. I just like there to be really strong colors here and there to give it a little bit of what we say oomph. Maybe some watercolor as well. 
And here, if it makes backgrounds or what you call cauliflowers, that of course is absolutely no problem because it's like an abstracty effect anyway that we're going to get here. Maybe some more darks. I've just put the tape around there to make a nice neat edge here where the water has, the watercolor has run across. But um, probably wasn't really necessary for this one. Okay, so now I'm going to let it dry. This has to dry absolutely without a hairdryer because if you dry it with a hairdryer, as it dries slightly, you'll be blowing the salt off and it might not have the same effect. So I'm going to let it dry completely and then I'm going to come back to it and paint the albatross. Now I've let it dry in the sun for about an hour. You can see they're still on there. And I'm just going to brush it off with my hand. And then we'll see what sort of effects we've got. And then I might take just a ruler and just make sure. That's why you've got to make absolutely sure that it's dry because you don't want to smear the, the paint all over the place. Right, so that is the that is the effect that I have, which is great. Really happy with that. So, um, how cool is this ruler? <laughs> Just want to show you this. Sweet, isn't it? Anyway, I am now going to come in and do my my albatross. So I'm using a different little palette. It's uh, a bit smaller than the last one, just just because my paint's grey is in there, and I don't have it in in all my palettes. And I like the paint's grey because it's slightly more blue in colour than absolute black. So the black browed albatross have really dark wings if you view them from the top like this. So I'm just going to wet it slightly. Drop in some of my color. And it, that's the thing, it doesn't have to be absolute black. We don't need that. Black's a very sort of deadish color. It's, it's not bad when you mix it with, with something else different colors, with a bit of green or even with yellow makes, uh, yellow and black makes a lovely green. So I'm not completely anti-black. It's just pure, pure out of the tube. I don't really use it. And this part of the end of the tail is also black or dark, should I say. Just give, give it an idea of some movement here. It's not so stiff, maybe. Idea of some feathers. That'll be fine for now. And I think I will put in my beak. I'm gonna use the, like a combination 
of the lighter or lemon yellow and cadmium yellow. In fact, maybe I'll just use the cadmium yellow. So these albatross have what they call tube noses. So they have this bump over here, a little gland here that um, extracts the salt that they get in them from eating all the fish. And there's a little gland there that where the salt actually comes out at the end of the day. The black browed albatross are found um, in the sort of southern ocean. So anyway, anywhere around uh, the tip of South America, Falkland Island, South Georgia, that sort of Drake Passage on the way down to Antarctica. Uh, that is the general area uh, that I have seen them. And I've actually seen them nesting in the Falklands, which is absolutely fantastic. In fact, this, I'll show you this painting over here. This was done at West Point in the Falkland Islands, where we hiked up to their nesting site and um, got to view them. And they here make their nests in this tussock grass and on the use uh, the mud to build these little round nests. And this is right on the edge of a cliff. It's absolutely spectacular. And they breed there in the southern summer months. Oh, this, by the way, is uh, like a type of brown paper with gouache mixed with watercolour. And that's how it stands out like that. It's not watercolour paper. Now, you want to give a bit of an idea of um, sort of body in the albatross as in that it has this sort of roundness. And I'm going to be using, in fact, the paint's gray is probably good enough as well, but just very, very pale. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wet a certain section here, just the bottom of the bird flying. So just the bottom and then to try and get that roundness. I'm just going to drop in some of this thin colour over there. Let's just give us a bit of idea. Now remember it's going to dry lighter as well. So I might... Oh, you see my yellow's run in there. I haven't waited. I'll just add that out a little bit. Don't be overly concerned. As long as it's still wet, you can easily dab it out. I'll try not to touch that area. And then here by the eye, in fact, that's a lot darker. These albatross are on the uh, threatened list. So there's not that many of them around. Um, their main enemy, of course, is man and the big fishing trawlers. So when they go out to feed and they feed on anything they often if they if there is a fishing trawler they will fly behind the trawler and uh, try and scavenge what is there which can be a problem for the albatross because they get stuck on the hook of these long liners so that is a bit of a uh, or should I say it's a serious problem we're doing a lot to try and prevent it. There's something called the hook pod. You know, let's just uh, have a look that up on the internet. Very ingenious way of trying to pre prevent uh, any kinds of seabirds from getting stuck on the hook. So that is uh, works well as well.
Right, I'm gonna let that dry now and I uh, might come in later with a bit of bit of uh, pen and ink just to finish this off or I might decide I'm just going to leave it leave it as is. So we'll just let that dry and that's my albatross skimming over the Southern Ocean. And I just want to show you if I take this masking tape off. Don't leave the masking tape on too long because it can really start getting stuck. If you can see here, it just sort of finishes it off quite nicely all the way around if you should have paint there so you don't have these these sort of things. It'll just be a nice a nice border. And this is the end result of my albatross flying over the Southern Ocean. I hope you've enjoyed it.